Hello everyone, me again. Uh, today's video we're going to be talking about my Dell PowerEdge M1000E blade system uh, that I have here in my garage. Uh, I'll go over it a little bit, uh, what I have, the specs, uh, and what I'm doing with it, with it at the moment. Um, so let's get this video started, shall we? Here I have the Dell M1000E. It's a 10U blade system. Uh, with 16 slots in total uh, currently you can see that I don't there's not a lot that's going on with it at the moment I have a total of five Dell PowerEdge M620 blades that are currently in the chassis and right under this I have two Dell Equalogic uh, let me see if we get that yes the PS-M4110 uh, those are storage arrays. Oh, there's my finger. Those are storage arrays uh, that are designed for the system. So these are my, like I said, these are the blades that have all the processing, processing compute power, and that has all the storage power and storage capabilities. Uh, so I'll start by doing a quick overview on the front and what there is exactly here on the front. So let's see if we can. Let's see if we can get started right off the bat on the front. Ah, here we go, let me. And I actually have to get down on the floor to do this because uh, this is actually at the very bottom of my uh, 42U cabinet. Uh, so here, if I get a little bit, <laughs> a little bit closer, you can see. Oh, my phone's not even focusing. Ah, hang on a second. Ugh, this is not a very good position and a very good way to film. Let me see if we can do it like this. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, so here we go. Um, First things uh, first, as I mentioned before, this has 16 slots in total. Uh, this blade system server is designed is designed to hold half height blades like the uh, M620s and full height blades, which I don't have, uh, as well as double uh, double width blades, which are these guys, and quarter height blades, which are about this size right there or yeah quarter high blades that size very very small so on this machine you know honestly speaking you can customize it 10,000 different ways and you know the opportunities of a system like this is really endless so it's yours to discover and and to customize and configure but uh, generally speaking for all M1000E chassis uh, you'll see that if I pull this is just a filler of course there's nothing in here and I'll show you that right now that's empty so if you look right down there that's just a flap that uh, protects actually the mid plane that I can't let me see if I can get this one out I might be able to get my hand down there and open up the flap uh, let's see how can I do this without hurting myself possibly uh, this unit is actually powered uh, the chassis, I believe, is on. I'm not certain. I, actually, no, the chassis is not on. The power supply, but the chassis is actually not on. Uh, so if I stick my... Uh, there you go. You might not be... Uh, you can't see it. Uh, that's great. <laughs> uh, anyways, actually, I'll pull one of these uh, blades out, and you'll see all the connectors on the back. Uh, behind those flaps are a bunch of connectors that uh, are... Basically, that's the mid-plane. Of this unit and has all the interconnects power uh, io everything that communicates with uh, actually the whole entire chassis so that's that on the bottom over here this is actually uh, a video there's the power button right there video and usb for a keyboard and mouse uh, which is i have it hooked up right there this actually communicates uh, or it ties directly in the back of the unit with the uh, Avocent IKVM module, which provides all the video capabilities or um, how should I say, all the KVM capabilities, keyboard, video, mouse capabilities of the M1000E. Uh, and we'll, I'll get to the back as well, and you'll see at the back and how that looks like. So this, and yes, the power, the enclosure is off. This is the nice little, um, interface slash control panel that the M1000E has uh, 
you don't, I mean, you can do a few things here, but a lot of the stuff is actually done remotely, and I can show you that as well later. Uh, and I'll power this on in a second for you. Uh, the rest is nothing, that's just the Dell logo. That's the model right there. Uh, and that actually is the other M620 and the storage blades. So if I power this on, actually you should hear this thing really when it uh, when it's actually powered straight off the uh, the circuit. It's it sounds like a jet engine. It's 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 so loud. But here, let me if I press the power button far down here, you might be able to get a glimpse of it or just a portion of how this thing sounds when it starts up. And I'm not even kidding. It does sound like a jet engine when it starts. And there you go. It tells you on. There she goes. So the enclosure is now officially powered on. And you, I'm not sure if you can tell, but the noise level now is <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit elevated more than uh, uh, than before. Uh, yeah. So enclosure chassis is on now. Uh, and so now with the chassis on, here. Let me see. Let me get my camera focused. Darn it. Ah, take my word for it, but there's, you can see settings, you can see the settings of, of servers and, and uh, what's it called, the blades, it has quite a few features, but let's say for example the status, there's some whatever, you know, details, CMCs, the rear of the unit, we'll get to the rear now of this guy, the front, so it does have quite a few things and it's conveniently placed in the front as well and you can tuck it away just like that. And let's go take a look at the back and then I'll come back to the front and we'll take a look at these blades and see how, how they look. So the m 1000 is on, I will not be able to know if um, if you can hear anything what I'm saying because the fans are so darn loud and I'm standing directly behind the uh, chassis right now, all nine fans are blowing uh, cold air actually because it's coming from the front. So it's actually not too warm. Uh, none of the blades are powered up just yet. Uh, and it's, yeah, no, it's just sucking in air from the front and blowing it out the back. And it's, yeah, it's cold. It's <laughs> nothing happening there. Um, so if I can show you how the back looks, I'm in a very bad position <laughs> filming this, so I'll try to make the best out of it. Um, you see here, that is sucks. All right, let's go here. This, or at least the, um, how can I say, the, see it, the M1000E, basically the way it works is very similar to a Dell Vertex. If you ever seen the Dell Vertex, um, blade server it's pretty much the same thing but for those of course who doesn't who don't know I'll go over it for you this uh, a lot of the Dell at least for the Dell um, blade systems uh, they have what's called a CMC a chassis management chassis management controller and the CMC's are actually redundant the M1000 and the vertex as well the Dell vertex have redundant CMC's. The, uh, in the case of the M1000E, it's actually dedicated slots uh, for them. There's the primary one here, and the secondary one that's right there. That's the second CMC. This guy is the IKVM module that I was talking about that has my uh, video connected in the front. Uh, the same happens here. You can connect over here uh, a monitor, and over here you can connect the uh, keyboard and video and uh, keep, uh, keyboard and mouse this guy uh, this board for this it's um, I have to double check but I believe it's for remote uh, connections to this module I have to double check I'm not too certain about that um, so those are the CMC's at the top over here and the IKVM module uh, on the bottom there are these massive 2700 watt power supplies and you can see they have a funny connector i'll get the phone to the bottom here you can see those are the connectors 
I currently have only three being used. Reason being, well, I don't need all six. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> it, it has, you can tell that this machine is designed to output quite a bit of power, if need be. Um, so yeah, there's actually a six of these power supplies. I'm only using three, one, two, and three over there. So yeah, no need for six. Um, these are just the fans over here. The fans in the back of the M1000E. And these are the I.O. modules over here. Uh, in this case, and there goes the voice crack. <laughs> um, this over here, Amanda, I'm in a very bad position over here. This first module is a 10 gig fabric. This is a gigabit fabric. And this is a fiber channel fabric. This, these fabrics that I mentioned, there's three of them, A, A, B, and C. And the way it works is these connect directly to the uh, midplane of the M1000E and from the midplane connect to the blades. And inside the blade servers, there are specific slots for uh, connections to these fabrics. And I'll open one blade up and I'll show you what I mean. But in this case, the way I have it configured, like I mentioned, that's a 10 gig fabric. This is a gigabit fabric, and that's a fiber channel fabric. And another thing is, what's fancy about this M1000E is everything is redundant. So there's not just one set of uh, one pair or one set of switches and, and pass through modules. There's actually a second set right there. So this chassis is fully redundant. There's, there's a total of six I.O. modules installed on this chassis. You can have three installed, but of course I got them in pairs, so there you go. I have uh, six of them now. Uh, so yeah, and the rest are just the connectors. This is for stacking. These connectors are stacking. And my camera's blurry, that's great. Um, here, let's see. Those are just standard gigabit ports. These are uh, over here. Oh, let me go from here. These are gigabit ports. These are SFT plus ports for 10 gigabit. Uh, Ethernet also, uh, also by the way. And these are 4 gig fiber channel ports. Uh, of course, as you can see, it says Emulex, right? So that's pretty much the back of this unit. The fans, as they are blowing very, very loud. <laughs> um, and it's quite kind of cold because there's actually no servers running at the moment so the only thing it's doing is just sucking blow uh, cold air and blowing it out to the back where i'm freezing at the moment <laughs> no i'm not freezing i'm just kidding but let me go now back to the front and we'll take a look at one of the blades and see how everything kicks inside all right front. Uh, apologies if you couldn't really hear me now from the <laughs> uh, the back of the sky it is quite loud as you can see Actually, the startup of this guy is not even close to what the fans are running at right now. If I can, at the, at the end of this video, I'll videotape this thing starting up and you'll see how, and I'll just shut up and you'll see how, how loud this thing really gets. So, I'll try to do that. So, but now anyhow, let's take a look at how, uh, at least one of these blades, how it looks like on the inside. Because I'm pretty sure some of you are dying to know how the hell it looks like on the inside. Uh, well, first and foremost, this is, like I said, a half-height blade. The Power Gem 620s are half-height blades, and you can put any other kinds of supported blades in this machine, and there's like a few other ones. So uh, this machine does definitely have quite a bit of flexibility to it. Uh, on the front, actually, let's go over this blade. So, of course, you see the M620 right there. Uh, on the front of this guy, there's actually uh, connections for uh, two drives, two and a half inch uh, hard drive, SATA or SAS. Um, right now there's just filler modules at the moment. I don't have anything connected. Uh, over here is the power button. These two are uh, USB connections. And this is a indicator light. Uh, for Or identification light. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the front. There's actually really nothing to it. Uh, <laughs> surprisingly. So now on the top. Uh, classic Dell. Or at least I should say Classic Dell. Um, they give a pretty good uh, summary of information about the server. 
So the configuration of how the RAM has to be installed, uh, the CPUs, uh, right there, that's uh, the front, uh, telling you which is what. Uh, that's the view of actually the, the motherboard inside and we'll of course take a look at that uh, these are just some other stuff USB key uh, iDRAC and uh, yeah V flash and uh, the fabric connectors we'll see as well so yeah very good overview uh, of the um, of the power edge m620 so uh, let me open up now this uh, lid kind of cheated already so it's already opened partially for me so I'll put, we'll put this over here actually, next to the HP Z800 workstation. So we'll put that there, hopefully that doesn't fall. Um, so here we go, and we can take this out. This is just some sort of uh, plastic divider slash baffle or whatever. So over here, of course, this is based off of the uh, Intel Xeon uh, 2500 series, I believe. Uh, version 1 and version 2. Uh, these are uh, LGA 2011 sockets that are under here uh, and this is a actually is a 12th generation blade uh, from Dell uh, they have 11th generation blades and they have I believe 13th generation blades for the M1000E uh, so yeah uh, in the in the back as well here you can see or just over here in general these are all the dim slots for the M1000 uh, not the M1000E for the M620. Uh, near the front, this is the, uh, if I actually can pull this out and you'll maybe might be able to see. Yeah, there you go. This is the uh, back plane interf or interface, whatever you call it, for the um, two drives on the front. And that's the connector right there. You don't want to bend one of those pins, do you? Um, hidden off to the distance actually under this or at least under under there there's actually a perk rate controller uh this blade has a perk h710p i believe uh installed so uh these blades actually can come with rate controllers as well if need be uh, i believe this is the only blade that actually has one at the moment uh near the back you see these are actually the connections or uh, the cards that interface uh, eventually to the fabrics that are in the back of this guy. Uh, each blade or each each blade server, uh, at least for actually um, actually no, just in general, each blade server has these connections. Uh, some of them have a few more, and some of them just have two or three. Actually, in this case, has three. Uh, these two are uh, this one is the gigabit fabric fabric B. Uh, this is the fiber channel fabric, fabric C, and right under this guy, under this module, or fabric, or card, whatever you want to call it, this is the uh, connection to the first fabric, fabric A. This is a dual port uh, 10 gig uh, LOM, LAN on motherboard, that interfaces to the uh, uh, fabric A, the first fabric. Uh, oh, and uh, the back of this, you can see, these are all the proprietary connectors, power, data, everything that uh, is supplied to each of these blades uh, and of course from the M1000E. Uh, here you have uh, SD card slot so if you want to install let's say uh, Proxmox or uh, VMware ESXi you can install to one of these two actually redundant as well see uh, SD1, SD2 uh, one of these two redundant SD cards uh, in the far back right over there that's a USB uh, port uh, to install a USB DOM disk on motherboard um, and right over here I believe yeah right actually right there that's the um, iDRAC V flash so if you have uh, uh, that option that would be there this one doesn't have it there's no card installed at the moment uh, it's actually really an SD card, but apparently it's formatted specially or whatever so that the iDRAC can use it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the insides of one of these uh, blade servers. So now uh, I'll actually show you how one of the insides of these ones look like. So let's go take a look at that right now. These are actually, I have two in this case. I have my finger, darn it. <laughs> uh, these are two uh, Ecologic storage arrays for the M1000E. The way these work, actually, uh, each one has about 14 drives, I believe, uh, 14, 15 drives, 
Uh, each has two uh, controllers, redundant controllers. <coughs> and the front, actually over here, you'll see, hang on, if I can uh, remove them, that is if I can. Um, Burn it, hang on, let's see if we can remove these. Uh, these are actually configured from here. Uh, you can configure them somehow through the CMC, but as well, this is a serial uh, connector. And this connects to the first controller. And this connects to the second one. These are just covers. Like so. See? And they connect to the RAID controllers inside. And yeah, right now I just have some covers on. But you connect a no molding cable to here and the other side to your PC and then you configure the RAID and uh, the arrays and everything from there. So the way it works to access actually your, your I'm saying disks and you're probably wondering, yeah, okay, the disk, where the hell are the disks? So the, the genius way, well, I say genius, but the smart way now managed to um, uh, consolidate about, yeah, about 17, 17? not 17 I'm getting my numbers mixed up 14 15 discs into that slot is simply by actually using a drawer mechanism so you actually push on the front and it releases a drawer and if you pull out the drawer there you go this is how this blade looks like or a storage blade I should say um, at the moment I have no idea no it's not powered on um, so right now, you can see I don't have any caddies, uh, this is really poor on my behalf, I should get some caddies for this, I know, <laughs> um, but this does, I believe, seven, this has 14, 14 drives, so 7 over here, and 7 over here in the back, and these are the two RAID controllers for, the, uh, for this uh, unit. And uh, th this takes two and a half inch drives, uh, no three and a half inch drives, unfortunately. So this is how this one looks like. And of course, when you're finished with it, you just go ahead, pull it all, push it all the way in until it clicks. I'll show you the other one as well, just for looks. Here's the second one. There you go. And again, 14 drives, it's able to handle and the two RAID controllers right there. So, yeah, and uh, I, I have to get caddies, I think I said, I'm very, I'm sorry about that. If pe people are probably uh, gonna blast me now in the comments below saying these should have some caddies, I know, but I don't have any at the moment. I'll see if I can get some and put them in. That's a definitely a must. I did that just so I can test some stuff and see how it's going. So, it actually is going pretty good. Uh, a lot of this stuff actually, so let me just say, a lot of this stuff is actually not running at the moment. Well, it's not running at the moment because I'm still configuring and uh, just trying to deploy and test some other stuff. Um, the plan with this guy is maybe some uh, uh, an install of uh, Windows Server uh, 2016 or whatever on each of the blades and maybe doing some... Uh, or not even Windows Server, sorry, some SQL database stuff. Uh, maybe I might be doing that. I have no idea. Uh, I'll have to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just basically, that's, that was uh, how those two storage blades look like. Uh, I'll see now if I can get a, a glimpse of how the uh, CMC, actually, how do you access this now uh, and see what's going on. I'll show you that right now. Uh, I'll go get my laptop and I'll cut this and we'll get back to that. We're now at the uh, login screen for the uh, CMCs of the uh, Dell M1000E. Um, yeah, so I'll just put some credentials in and uh, we'll get to see how this uh, how the server looks like when we connect remotely. So you can see that this is quite similar uh, to a lot of you know Dell iDRAC stuff, uh, remote management stuff, even switches I believe uh, have the same look to it. So it's really not that much complicated. And yes, I know that there's something going on with these uh, storage arrays. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. I'll have to take a look at that uh, another time. Uh, it's saying that my CMC redundancy is lost. Let's take a look at that. Is it lost? 
Oh yeah, it's lost. So we're gonna figure that out. Yeah, let's just say that I haven't powered this thing up in a quite a bit some time. So, uh, you know, there's some stuff that I still gotta fix. But there you go. So I'm not hiding anything. That's the reality of this. But it does work. So, um, so yeah. Let's see if uh, yeah. So basically, this is just an overview of the uh, CMC here. So, uh, or at least the chassis. This is an overview of the chassis, the front and the back. That's the uh, over here. That's the one. M620 that I actually have connected as you can see there slot 8 and that's the one right there uh, the back gives you of course uh, the back view gives you a view of everything the three power supplies that I have connected the two sets of IO modules the fans and the uh, CMC's and the IK IKVM module um, yeah so you can navigate to uh, uh, an individual blade <coughs> pardon me Let, let's load this up and you can actually get to the eye drag and I'll try to do that right now and you can see these are all the settings and whatever the hell that's in that blade right now so uh, all the settings all the, the hardware as well that's all there so if I want to actually get to the eye drag because these blades do have eye drag uh, this one I believe has eye drag 7 enterprise installed so process is the same just with any other Dell server and uh, oh it's saying it's fishy that's not good so we'll just go right ahead who cares right <laughs> um, so here you go and this is now the eye drag for uh, that blade right there uh, and you can see it's pretty much the same as with any other Dell server even for the, for the heck of it for even the uh, R910s it's pretty much the same thing uh, maybe a few differences, but there you go. Virtual console, uh, really everything about the server, the uh, name, and just really almost everything. So I'll just log out of this guy over here. There you go. And um, yeah, so there you go. So over here, there's the overview of all the slots, 16 slots, as I mentioned. Over here is the, um, they actually really do break it down. There's the, the server overview. The chest, the um, front overview with the blades and whatever, and these are the I/O um, module overview thing in the jiggies. So you can see right here that uh, yeah, there you go. There's the two uh, 10 gig um, modules, the gigabit modules, and the fiber channel modules, as I mentioned before. Uh, and you can, as well with just like with the iDrive, you can uh, connect directly to the um, uh, switches and modules that are on this guy that are on this guy and uh, let's see which one did I want to click uh, oh I don't think that's gonna work yet because I have to configure them still I have to uh, hear this one will work there you go so there you go so this is how it looks like for one of them uh, the uh, gigabit uh, modules so uh, you can log in and uh, see actually I, I, I have to reset the password because I kind of forgot what it was so I can't even log in yeah bummer but it pretty much looks the same as as this really and just maybe with of course specific to the switches and modules that's all so there you go uh there's the fans tells you the status of the fans actually i can tell you right now how fast these fans are spinning so we have the fastest over here is 7028 rpm so that's the fast oh no sorry 8139 rpm uh that's that's fan number five i believe yes that is fan number five so um yeah and there you go it continuously changes and updates and whatever and yes of course nine fans because one is not enough <laughs> um uh here we go this is the ikvm uh module that's in the back as well uh power supplies of course like i said six power supplies because one is not sufficient um and there you go so basically i'm actually running it on 110 uh service 110 service 110 volts i do plan on running this guy on 240 volt service especially for this guy um all i can say is when this guy runs my lights start to flicker not this one but maybe the other one so i should get this on a separate circuit uh before something bad happens knock on wood <laughs> uh but yeah there you go uh so yeah really this is it's amazing actually really the cmc it gives you a complete overview of everything 
Uh, yeah, there you go. So this is complaining about those uh, storage blades. I have to figure that one out later. So yeah, no, very, very good overview of the whole M1000E from a uh, remote distance. Again, this is something you can't really do, you know, all these these features and all these settings. You, you can't really change it from the um, front control panel. Uh, you would have to really go into the CMC like this, log into the CMC, do the changes or whatever, and then let it do its thing. That's just really to give you an overview or just a really, really quick summary of, let's say, uh, health statuses and uh, IP addresses maybe. And that's pretty much it. Everything else, you got to go here and you got to configure over here but uh but yeah so that's pretty much an overview of uh how the cmc looks like on a dell m1000e so yes i have a dell PowerEdge m1000e why well to be honest with you i have no idea why um <laughs> i got it for a good deal i don't even know how much i paid maybe a few hundred for it uh canadian uh, a while ago but um i mean uh blade servers in general are are pretty good machines some people have mixed opinions about them saying yes for example they can consolidate a lot of space but they can only consolidate a lot of space when you're using it you know to the full capacity right so in this case the only time it would really be efficient is if you actually have 16 blades installed and and for my machine you can see i only actually have five so if you do the math it really doesn't check out in terms of efficiency so this is actually more of a a waste so to speak but um you know being the way i am i don't really care about efficiency you know uh so what it has six two thousand seven hundred watt power supplies and you know whatever the heck over the kill you know whatever redundancy options on this guy uh i just have it you know to be honest with you i like to screw around with it to have fun with it and um and uh, to see what I can do with it, really. Um, but, uh, you know, I will get it going. And I'll hopefully get something installed on the blades. Because it is a working machine. Uh, and the fans just quiet down there for a little bit. Um, so, yeah. So, no, that's just basically... Uh, I hope you like the video, most importantly. Um, but, yeah. So, that was just a quick overview of the uh, Dell PowerEdge M1000E blade system. There is so much you can talk about the system. But... I don't want to bore you guys out. I have no idea how long this video is going to be already. Probably half an hour. <laughs> so if you skim through it, I don't blame you. I'm just so boring to listen to. I know. Why the hell should I talk? <laughs> I should just show more of this and less of me talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now, uh, of course, let me... I want to get this so... I don't want to make this sound so depressing and, uh, and whatever. And of course, this looks like it is near the end of the video. And... Um, let me see if I can get this thing powered up from scratch and you will see how loud this thing gets. And I'm not kidding you. When I say it sounds like a jet engine, it does sound like a jet engine. It is loud as hell. So, of course, before I uh, show you that and shut the hell up, uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more content. Uh, and until next time, uh, I'll see you on the next video. So, take care, of course. And yeah, see you on the next one. Bye bye. So let's see if we can uh, connect this uh, power thing up, and uh, you'll just see how loud this thing really got, does get. So here we go three, two, one, power applied. And we're set for liftoff. It's gonna start up now in a few seconds, and you see how loud this thing really gets. There you go.